Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. Before I go, first kill graphic novel link is in the description. It's kind of funny now that I get all of these uh, books off to print. The only thing that still needs to go to print that's late is uh, Iron Sights Three. I get these emails or like comments about like, "Where's the book? It's late. Why are there no updates?" I'm like, "Bro, <laughs> like check your spam folder. I put out like three updates on Sunday." Um, so uh, anyway, so first kill still <coughs> still time to back that, and um, uh, I have to apologize <laughs> to a stray cat. Yesterday I said that uh, I had an allergic reaction to petting her. I thought maybe I accidentally rubbed my eyes, but it looks like I got some sort of sinus infection. Um, so the cat is innocent. Um, Although it's weird, it's the it's usually I have the the cheek sinuses, whatever those are called. Uh, now I have the like the uh, behind the inside of the eyebrow, like at the temple. Uh, that's what's like uh, giving me sinus so sinus issues. So like I slept or dozed a lot of yesterday, and then that led me to waking up at like one in the morning, just like completely awake. So it's like oh. Let's see what happened today. Um, and I had gotten some emails with screenshots or links, but I didn't really get it. Like uh, Heidi McDonald said, apparently while I was busy today, some galaxy brains accused X-Men of being woke. Ha ha. Uh, so uh, then uh, Mags typed, a uh, lot of people big mad that things they enjoy, they might also disagree with. Ghostbusters is a pro-capitalism parable where the EPA is the bad guy and not the guys running around with particle accelerators, but it's still great. So people send me this with no context. I was like, I, I don't, I don't, I do not understand what this is in reference to. And then, holy shit. Apparently not everyone had a sinus infection yesterday because you all were very, very, very busy. So this article shows just like a million uh, uh, tweets uh, about um, that the uh, X-Men is woke. And it's all due to, literally, this uh, <coughs> article in Empire Magazine and... Right here, it says, not the showrunner, it's this person who wrote the listicle, who probably made $50, um, summarizes a character by saying that they are non-binary and has an interesting buddy relationship with Wolverine. Um, so by the time I woke up, it went from the people saying, the journalist said it, to people saying the showrunner said it and then the buddy relationship became this is Wolverine's boyfriend and it's like bro y'all are doing too much <laughs> like it seems like when I am not making videos things just go a little crazy like I didn't make videos for the first three and a half weeks of January and like some sort of civil war erupted while I was gone. Like, I went back and all of a sudden I was like being told like who I can talk to and what opinions I can say. And if I gave my opinion, I had to like prove that I had the validity to say that opinion. It's like a lot of shit happened <sighs> between January 1st and January 24th or whatever like calm down but anyway so all these people tweets and articles and YouTube videos were getting very very angry about X-Men being woke and that's the word they kept using over and over and over again and as just some guy likes to say, think one, just one step ahead. If you complain 
that the X-Men is woke, then the other side gets to laugh at you because it's really easy to prove to the average person that the X-Men is woke because there are many different usages of the word woke. The people who like being woke, of course, give it a positive spin where they will say it's being liberal, it's being progressive, and it's caring about civil rights, which describes the X-Men franchise. Part of it. They also go into space. Sometimes they get turned into vampires. Sometimes they travel through time. Sometimes they have silly billy adventures at the mall. X-Men is an everything and the kitchen sink franchise that also has some aspects that could be described as woke. So when you say it's not woke and it's or it's suddenly woke, you now have to prove that it was never woke. When there have been numerous allegories, analogies to civil rights, to uh, homophobia, to they had the legacy virus that was an analog for HIV. When you say like, oh my gosh, the X-Men is woke, I can't believe it's woke. Like you have put yourself in a position where you cannot possibly win. Now, the X-Men is also woke in the negative aspect. When I say woke, I'm not talking about a team that has people of different races, men and women. When I say woke, I'm talking about like that Leo Williams X-Men Krakoa series where a group of random mutants who just kind of fell together into an ad hoc team, like 90% of them were gay. And it wasn't like gay night at the, the tiki lounge that they had on Krakoa. It was literally just random happenstance that brought this team together. And they were all, almost all of them were gay. And then at the end of the Krakoa era, they were always bragging about the X slack and they would show the Zoom calls. It looks like the Brady Bunch with all the squares. And by the end of the Krakoan era, 80% of the writers were gay or claimed to be gay. That's woke. <laughs> That's an agenda. That is not random happenstance. It's not like Sean Gordon Murphy. Oh, Zorro's sister just happens to be gay. No, you made her gay because you think it's still 2018 and you think you can flip the script and you are smarter than everyone. You're not smarter than everyone. You're smarter than learning disabled lesbians. Okay? Dial it down. Several notches there, Sean. So, when you start saying it's woke, you've, you, you've just lost. Because even a <coughs> hastily written, <laughs> poorly uh, researched article can still easily make the claim that X-Men is woke in essentially a neutral or positive sense. In that it frequently, well, first of all, it has a diverse cast, men and women, lots of different races. And then they also repeatedly, but not all the time, talk about civil rights in different ways, sometimes allegorically, sometimes literally, sometimes just hitting you over the head with the complete lack of subtlety that they have. But when you say the X-Men isn't woke, you have a 100% chance of losing. Like, why would you do that? Why would you create a situation where Mags Visaggio gets to be correct? Wh why? Well, it's complicated and it goes to lots of things. Um, but, I mean, I've talked about it. Uh, George R. R. Martin was talking about anti-fans who just kind of like when things break. They like when things fail. I remember in December, like, I was getting all these notices. It's like, Wonka underperforms! And they were, like, really excited. It's like, oh, that Wonka! Wait, why am I supposed to be happy that Wonka underperforms? Oh, the studio, they did something. Da, 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 da. That's like a, that's a, that's like a really weird, like 
like uh, uh, that feels like something that should happen in like Palestine, where people just accumulate grievances and feuds forever. It's like, oh, I can't go to that falafel stand because in the 12th century AD, you you understand what I'm saying. If someone directly, viciously attacks you, I understand. If there's a black person in a show, it depends. Is it a BBC show set in a tiny Irish village in the Middle Ages? Yes, in that case, you can pretty much sight unseen say, that's woke, that is pandering, that is agenda, especially if it's like not a port city. <laughs> like... Unless the unless the, the title of the show is What the fuck is this black guy doing here? But if it's set in London and it's a doctor or a cop or whatever and you have a black woman or a black guy and it's modern day London maybe it's woke, maybe it isn't. One of the things that always confuses me in an actual way is I would think that everyone wants to be listened to and respected in Afghanistan and Iraq and most US conflicts there's this phrase hearts and minds and it's basically like the Superman thing Superman can easily snap the spine of every villain and throw them into the Sun but he doesn't because he's the good guy. Every village we patrolled, we could just easily annihilate. But we didn't. We went there and we tried to win hearts and minds. You have a generator? Oh, your generator sucks. We're gonna order one from whatever Norway, ship it here, install it, guard it. Month later, oh, you blew up your own generator. <laughs> or, you know, to spite uh, oh, you're Sunni, and we put it in the Shiite side of town. Okay, so we're going to fix the one on that side, and then we're going to fix the other one. Uh, with um, uh, That was the story in, our, in Iraq. In Afghanistan, it was wells and schools. We're going to dig a well. Hey, you guys have a well. Isn't that great? Taliban blows up the well. Okay, we're going to fix the well. We're going to patrol here more. We already patrol that other city. We're going to double our patrols. The idea is you want to be less bad than your enemies so they choose you or at least they put up with you. And one of the things about the infantry is you're excited about combat and you volunteer for that. And when a deployment, when not much happens, it's kind of a letdown. You're like, well, not much happened on that deployment. Well, that's because you did your job successfully. You you patrolled enough that the bad guys weren't able to take over any areas. You had good enough armor. You had good enough air assets. Your line uh, platoons were well-trained and they had, you know, it was a good team and everything stayed calm. Can you imagine being a cop and saying like, we have had no race riots in like three years. Like, what are we doing wrong? Like, you're doing everything correctly. In Afghanistan, Maywand, we left. We were re replaced by some shitheads who thought they were in an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. And they caused massive problems uh, and uh, basically lost the faith of the locals. They basically said, oh, we can get shot by 762 or we can get shot by 556. Basically, the two different common calibers of the Taliban and the United States military. There has become an obsession with enjoying things break. And to a normie, to your neighbor, that never makes sense. People understand when you say like, oh, do you remember a few years ago they had the, the kneeling at the beginning of the NFL games? Plot twist. <laughs> the, 
The Midwest did not like that. Down here on the border, they did not like that. They didn't like this political stand or grandstand at the beginning of every game. They just wanted to relax and enjoy the game. That was wokeness that was understandable to a regular person. When you're saying like a, a trans, what is it, transforming? <laughs> Um, what is a shape changer? Uh, you're bothered that somebody described them as non-binary. I mean, that's the superpower that's the most likely to be genderless, non-binary, whatever. And it wasn't even them. It was some shill media hack who got $50 to write a listicle. Now, let's say eventually they say non-binary or they say genderless or something like that. Again, you ever seen Star Trek Deep Space Nine, Odo? He has a male aspect most of the time, but his true form is essentially a slurry of goo that just sits in a bucket. I mean, having a shape changer be non-binary is literally the most sensible take on that superpower. Now, him and Logan, if they make them like a gay couple, yeah, that's probably 100% pandering. But if there's a little running joke, it's like where he's all macho and he's like, oh, yeah, well, in the 1960s, you had a girlfriend named Rosa. And then he transforms and he's like, what? You were Rosa? It's like, maybe, maybe not. It's like a running joke. That would be funny. If they, if they make them a couple, that would be ridiculous because... Despite a few hints in the Krakoa era, most of which were in interviews, not in the text, Logan is very, very clearly heterosexual. This excitement, this, and the, the trailer did well. 6.4 million views. Uh, I saw a bunch of normies. They were all very, very excited. I didn't realize the whole thing of overacting I thought that went away, but there are still people who do that. But Struggle Nation is struggling. They only got 17,000 overacting at a, a trailer. I watched it. It was okay. The show, back in the day, was okay. It had a lot of characters you recognize, solid stories. One thing I liked about this uh, new version is they have, like, digital backgrounds. The old one... I think it was Nelvana from uh, Canada for the first or most of the seasons. They would have these like weird watercolor backgrounds that looked like Caillou. <laughs> like it wasn't very action packed. It was very pastoral. Um, so I was like, okay, everything is digitally colored. It, so it all kind of fits into one world. Um, so I like that. It was a very, very basic trailer that just showed one twist, which was, oh my God. Xavier is dead. Magneto is in charge. Okay. Interesting. That's enough that it will get my attention. There was nothing really to be offended by, worried about in the entire trailer. And we were told like two years ago, they are going to use some aspects of the Krakoa thing. From what you can see, it kind of looks like uh, Magneto is like very flamboyant and he wants to like Floss, essentially. Um, so he's going to hold, you know, festivities to show off and maybe there will be some intrigue. But it won't be just a gay fashion show like it was in the comics. But I mean, the, the, the spinning so much out of so little. Um, you know about uh, uh, focus groups, you know, they've got a new candy bar. So they get people from different demographics and one person says, uh, there's not enough peanuts in this. And then the next person says, I'm allergic to peanuts. I wish there was a version that had no peanuts. You got some person, they like caramel. They got another person, they like nougat. Nobody knows what nougat is, but they like it. And then you get to this guy and he says, okay, first of all, every single part of this candy bar is bad, both individually and together. The rapper is the worst rapper in the history of candy wrappers. Also, 
your company will never ever make any candy that is good and also you never have. Do you think that person gets listened to? They just nod and then they just cross out your answers because they say, oh, this person is just a crank. They're just angry at the world. They hate everything. They hate chocolate. They hate candy. They've never liked anything we've done. They will never like anything we, we will do. So what's the point of listening to them? And I hear, oh, uh, uh, Disney does this. Disney, everything Disney does is terrible. Well, Winter Soldier was Disney. Guardians of the Galaxy 1 was Disney. Avengers Infinity War was... There was so many things done under Disney. Now, yes, they do have a good... Uh, there is a good theory with a lot of proof that right now they are woke. But it's still not everything. Hawkeye was... It was okay. The first season of Mandalorian was okay. There were scenes in recent movies that I didn't like overall, but like that was a cool scene. The Shang-Chi... They had a fight on uh, scaffolds on the side of a building. That was actually pretty cool. The, the, uh, the fight in the bus, except for the funny parts from Aquafina. That was a good, solid fight. I enjoyed that fight. Uh, I think uh, it's really hard to stick the landing on being a grown man and your vegetables touch your mashed potatoes and you just freak out. And you don't want to eat anything and everything's ruined. Not everything can be the worst thing ever. If you have such a hatred and animosity to Disney and everything they do and every decision they make at every one of their business units is terrible, you should probably go check out your Netflix queue or your uh, Amazon Prime or Paramount or uh, what do they call it, Max. I guarantee you there are movies and TV shows, and you have a watch later. You have so much other stuff that you can enjoy. Now, I know people are going to say, oh, that's like Kelly Sue DeConnick. If you don't like my politics, don't buy my book. But there's going to be a lot of this uh, in this is, that is good. Are there going to be a couple of woke moments here and there? Yes. It's 2024. Every single thing from mainstream media will have some wokeness in it. I love the Mission Impossible movies, but in the Mission Impossible movies, they are in a universe where men and women are consistently portrayed as being equal physically. They had a fight in the latest one, and it was uh, Ilsa Faust, can't forget that name, against whoever Isai Morales was playing because obviously his name was forgettable. They have a knife fight. Now, Isai Morales wins, not because he's a man and has 40 more pounds of muscle. It's because they've already established that his, his weapon is the blade. That's his weapon that he's better than everyone else. Ilsa, they've shown her with martial arts and uh, weapons, specifically rifles. They have showed off many times how good she is with that, but with a knife he's better because he's the guy who's really good with knives but they never say like oh he's a man he's much stronger than her that's not a factor Ilsa Faust will tackle men much larger than her multiple men beat them all up and you go oh well she's a secret agent she had training but also she doesn't have that extra 40 pounds of muscle she doesn't have that extra bone density she but it's just can you say that's woke or that's a convention of the genre? That's that's what I would say, the second one. I mean, uh, Top Gun Maverick, they chose like the best eight pilots, something like that. One of them was a woman, I believe also Hispanic. But they were just kind of normal about it. You can have things that can appear woke and some people can say it is, some people can say it isn't. But this thing of like getting a good trailer, a good solid trailer and like frame by frame looking for something to be offended by and then just running with that you can't explain that to your neighbor your neighbor understands that kneeling at the beginning of every nfl game is distracting and divisive he can understand that 
he can understand when the doctor show that his wife has watched for 20 years, which means he's watched it for 20 years, slowly became 40% gay characters. I mean, you look at Star Trek. They have the movies in the third one, or the recent one, uh, Chris Pine. They make uh, Sulu gay. The actor who originated the role is like, Sulu isn't gay. Then they start making the shows. Star Trek Discovery, by like the third or fourth season, I forget which one, like half of the main cast is queer. And you're like, what is this? A ship of lesbians and trans people? Then they kind of realize they're like, oh shit, we went a little crazy. Then they have Strange New Worlds, and I think only one member of the main cast is gay, and she's bi, and usually she's flirting with guys. Like, they realize it's like, yeah, oh, we want to have uh, diversity. Star Trek Discovery? We went crazy. Half of the cast is gay. Holy shit, Picard, season one. There was basically nothing, not really much gay. And apparently they got a note from the studio, so I'm not kidding. In the final scene of the final episode of the season, two female characters who had barely interacted looked at each other, made goo-goo eyes, and held hands. Like, it was so ham-handed, no pun intended. Fish-handed? Hmm. But anyway, you get my point. It's 2024, everything's going to be a little bit woke. Especially if you look for it and then freak out about it for an entire news cycle. Then they get to make articles like this that disprove you easily and almost just as easily make you look really stupid. And by extension, everyone with an anti... It's like, oh, uh, they got one of those channels. Is that the ones who were freaking out that, like, Wolverine has a friend who is, like, genderless? Oh, no, they were freaking out about he had a, a lollipop instead of a cigarette. Like, it's really hard to stick the landing on being a man and freaking out unless it's, like, white phosphorus just burning you. You get freaking burned by Willie Pete. You can freak out as long as you want. But a listicle paraphrasing saying that one character might be mo uh, non-binary or perhaps a better term is genderless because they're just a bunch of goo that can take any form. Like I was just laughing imagining like a super macho borderline homophobic shape changer. They're like, Morph, we need you to take the form of Beyonce because she's performing for the King of Siam and we need you to assassinate him. He's like, yeah, miss me with that gay shit. So you want to be a dude? You want to be another dude? No, I, I'm just, I'm not a chick. Like, <laughs> yeah. And then you have to start using like uh, reverse psychology to like, well, you know, it's actually more gay that you won't transform into women. I'm pretty sure if someone was born that way and they could turn into any form that they would probably be about 50-50 on everything or have a perspective or a unique perspective. And let's not pretend like Morph was anyone's favorite character. He was in like a couple of episodes stretched over several seasons and it was just something you just read in Wizard. Oh, he's coming back for a two-episode storyline with... Blah, blah. Like, nobody cared. Nobody. <laughs> it was just, at the time, morphine technology, the mask was popular, so they made him, like, kind of like a Jim Carrey cartoonish character. Like, bro, come on, please, just, just, just stop. It's, you're not going to win doing stuff like this. There's a lot of things that you can easily, like Punisher stopping in the middle of Times Square to lecture two NYPD 
police officers about a sticker on their cruiser. That's woke. That is clearly 100% woke. Just breaks all immersion out of character. Choose your battles. Exercise tactical patience. There doesn't have to be a new controversy, as they say, in the UK every single day. Sometimes a day is just a day and nothing that crazy happened. And sometimes the crazy thing is you freaked out for 24 hours and now you look stupid on ScreenRant.com. TLDR, take a chill pill, comma, Will. Anyway, before I go, First Kill graphic novel, link is in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye.